Good. Yeah, it is good to me this week. I don't know about you. Well, I've got a few things to mention to you this morning by way of announcement, and so let me go ahead and do so at this time and take a little bit of an opportunity. Today is a very special day. In just a minute, we're going to give folks here the opportunity to share testimony about their fathers, and anyone that's here this morning would uh, be uh, feel free to uh, take advantage of that opportunity to do that. Let me take care of a couple of things by way of announcement this morning so that we make sure to get everything covered we need to. Tonight, we've got a lot going on. Today's a busy day, and this evening, a lot's going on. We're not going to have choir practice this evening at 5 o'clock, and the reason for it is because we're having a baby shower following the service at 7. And so uh, I recognize that something happened last week while I was out of town. You know, you go away and you just you pray that God will protect the church and watch over and all those things. And, and I announced two weeks ago there's no choir practice last week, and Brother Chris tried to overthrow the choir while I was gone. And um, folks, if you could just try to blot that out of your mind, and the memory of it, and we'll make sure that it never happens again. <laughs> and, uh, Renegade choir director. Yeah, I, I promised when we started our choir, I said, Brother Chris will not be allowed to direct the choir. But I uh, left town for a week, and he just, I don't know how he pulled it off, but, um, well, he didn't, anyway. So no choir practice tonight. I'm sorry about last week. Um, if I'd have been here, you know, I'd have been able to stop it, and I guess I won't be able to leave again. So anyway, <laughs> anyway, it's Sunday morning. I've, I've been giving him a hard time about it all day. You be sure to give him a hard time too. Did anybody here, did anyone in the choir remember me saying no choir practice next week? Okay, well, only a couple people. Mindy remembered, had it recorded, and my wife remembered. So anyway, well, on a positive note, we've got a lot of good things happening tonight. <laughs> no choir practice. I, in case you don't know, I'm joking a little bit about that, but I am mad at Chris for messing with the choir. Um, <laughs> it's hard to fix it when he tampers with it. You know, anyway, um, tonight we're having the opportunity. Brother Sammy is going to share uh, some pictures and just some of the, the testimony, the things the Lord did in his trip, uh, his soul winning trip overseas uh, a couple of months ago. And we've been waiting and preparing for that. Then, as well as my wife and I will be sharing. Uh, some of the things the Lord did last week while we were down in South America and had the opportunity to preach the crusade there. So we'll be updating the church and letting you know about that tonight. So this evening's service is going to be a little different. It's going to be a kind of a missions presentation tonight. Following that is the Cabral baby shower and for Jaime and Yvonne. And it's different from any baby shower that I've ever been to because I've never been to a baby shower before. And so uh, men are invited to this one. And uh, we're going to have the Jaime team and the Yvonne team and men we've got to represent for Jaime and so you be here this evening following the service everyone's invited we're going to have a really good time and, and folks we really uh, want to uh, show our love show our love to the Cabral family this evening so you be coming this evening prepared for that there is a sign up list on the door I don't think it's too late to sign up to bring something is it for by way of food so that would be fine if you have any questions about it though ask my wife because I don't know anything at all about baby showers and be the first to tell you that summer's here i mean it really is here i don't know if it's officially what's it about right now is when it turns summer right tomorrow tomorrow is i'll see there you go well uh you know what that means for our church it means door to door every day and lots of outreach and we're really looking forward to gearing up instead of an hour a day or whatever it's going to be pretty much as much as we can uh, we're going to be doing door to door as many hours as we can each week and we're going to do a lot of follow-up visitation. And so you come be a part of it. Be a part with our uh, church this summer. Last summer, I think we had the best summer ever. And it was because of outreach and because we had the opportunity to go out and uh, share the gospel. And so you uh, be prepared for that yourself. Be making plans to be part of the door-to-door -door this week. I put on here that it is Tuesday through Friday. We're going to be doing a lot of work on our van and getting it ready for our trip to the Bell Rice Ranch, which is in... Was it five short weeks or four short weeks now? Four and a half. Short four and a half short, short weeks. weeks. Very short weeks. And so those things are happening. Team day, Wednesday, 11 o'clock, and that'll go all the way through our, until the end of our evening service. And that's for any teenager. And what, so if you know of anyone who's a teen that needs to be somewhere, that's a good place, a good environment for them to be. Teen day is for free, and it's meant to be an outreach. We'd love to have any teens that you know come be part of our youth group this summer. And so it is, starts at 11 o'clock, and we begin 
with sports practice for the Bill Rice Ranch. We'll be practicing two sports each day. Then we'll first it begins, I guess, with teen roundup. We we'll go out and find teenagers. Then we have sports practice, two sports. And then we come back here and do a Bible study. And we do choir practice, which Brother Chris is not allowed to direct. And then we do um, teens are safe. We won't let Brother Chris mess with the teen choir or the adult choir. And <laughs> I can't believe he did that. Anyway, so we, we have uh, choir practice, Bible study, game time, and then the evening service, or supper in the evening service. And each week we have cuisine represented from different countries for dinner. Last week we had American. And uh, McDonald's is American, isn't it? Basically, yes. yes. <laughs> Last week was American, and it was McDonald's. So this week will be even better because it won't be McDonald's. <laughs> then um, follow-up visitation Thursday night is happening. And then two weeks from now is 4th of July. That's on a Sunday. Just so you know, we're not canceling church for 4th of July. Those things coincide. We're a nation that trusts in God. And I think that probably, most likely, we'll probably have a get-together. Haven't, haven't hammered all the way through that or everything, but we like to watch fireworks as a church or something like that following the evening service and have a fellowship. And 4th of July in Fort Lauderdale is absolutely beautiful. It's a wonderful time to be here. You go to the beach and you can see fireworks from about five different towns all at the same time. And it's just a really neat time. We're going to have fun as a church fellowshipping with that. But just in case you're wondering, are we going to cancel church? Um, no, it won't be happening. Scripture memory challenge is still on. I, uh, Because of my week in South America, am a little bit behind. I've, I'm eight miles down on the scripture memory challenge right now. So if you want to memorize scripture and really put me under once for all, this would be the week to do it. Probably if you were to memorize 40 or 50 verses this week, that would be enough that there's no way I could catch up this week. So, the Scripture Memory Challenge, again, is you memorize a verse of the Scripture for the challenge. I'll memorize the same passage, the same verse of Scripture and run one mile for it. And so, it's a good week to go ahead and try to kill the preacher. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm down eight miles already, so without ever starting, we're in great shape for that. I don't want to spend a lot of time on announcements this morning, but I would like to take a little bit of time just to give an opportunity to, for different individuals to give a testimony because today is Father's Day, to give a testimony about, first of all, their father and about maybe just to praise to God for giving them the father that he gave them. Let me, let me begin that by just uh, saying my, my dad's not here today. He is in my sister's church in Oklahoma. And uh, he's, he's got a grandson. There's a baby dedication today. And so I can't think of a better Father's Day for a father than to uh, go to his grandson's baby dedication. In our family, both my brother and my sister and myself were all Christians. And the reason for it is because God gave me a Christian father. My dad was a first-generation Christian. He was the, one of the first in our family to get saved and certainly the first to really live for God. And I don't know, I could talk all day about my dad and just how precious and special it is and how uh, grateful I am for the father that God gave me. But let me just suffice it, suffice to say this, that I am what I am because of the father God gave me. And I, I don't know how better to say that. I wouldn't change anything about my dad. And um, I'm just grateful to the Lord for giving me a father who, first of all, loved the Lord and was committed to doing what it took to raise his children to love God. And that's the kind of dad I had. And he's fun. He's got a great personality. He's probably the most talented person I know. But he's my father, and I love him. And, um, you know, I just couldn't ask for anything better than that. And I think that this is a good day for us to just reflect on the fathers that God gave us. I'm not talking about perfect day where you know you talk about how your father was perfect but to reflect on the fact that literally the person that God made your father to be is the reason that you are what you are we're the product of our parents and the product of our training and I believe God is pleased with my father for the things that he did to make sure that my brothers and sister and myself had a not a, just a dad who was a Christian but who wanted his children to have a different life than he himself had. And so, uh, thank God for my father. Anyone else like to just give a testimony about their father this morning? Chris? Well, briefly, I'd like to say my dad taught me to learn Bible verses and read the Bible. Hmm. There's a whole lot I could say great about my dad. Time would fail to say it all, but he also taught me how to fish. And, and, uh, and, a, and a direct choir, right? Yes. <laughs> 
guess you could say so. <laughs> Chris's dad loves the Lord, and he's a wonderful testimony.